decide what I wanted to talk about and I wanted to talk about photographing people because I think it's the hardest thing you can probably take pictures of because you have to communicate with them and ask them like what they want out of their picture. So bringing out the subject's personality, when you position a person, I always tell them to like do something they normally do. I make sure they act as if I'm not there and I don't let them look at the camera unless I tell them to. This way I can really get their personality and I guess it's just your personal preference but usually you can get a better picture. And when I, I spontaneously pose them, like I work with what they're wearing. For example, if like they have a hood on, a hooded sweatshirt on, I'll tell them to put the hood up. I also tell them to bring a prop, which can be like sunglasses, a hat, or a flower. And I usually suggest they wear like their favorite shirt, jacket, or a pair of shoes, because you don't want like a plain boring shirt that really doesn't tell their personality. And the background's really important too. Um, I usually can ask the person if they want to go somewhere. I usually try to involve them as much as possible. But if they don't have a preference, we usually just drive around until we find a good place for a picture. Here are some examples. Here I just told Caitlin just to sit on the railroad tracks. And I just talked to her to make her feel more comfortable. And I kind of darkened everything because I thought it would look better if it looked more serious. And this is the hooded sweatshirt example. Um, Kayla really likes this sweatshirt, so I told her to put the hood up. I think it's really good because the sun's shining directly on her and it kind of focuses more on her. Um, the way Yami is holding that flower kind of looks a little posed, but the way she's standing kind of offsets that and makes it even a really good picture. Okay, close-ups. Um, every time I take a close-up shot, I tell my subject to place their chin out and down and point it down because this usually minimizes a double chin and creates a stronger jawline. You want them to seem more confident in their pictures so everyone else can see that too. Did you just figure that out on your own or yeah. did you read that somewhere? Well, usually when I watch TV shows, like they're telling them that, but... Yeah. I've heard that before too. Yeah, I tried I just wondered if you just kind of had that their body position here should be relaxed because it's not as important as their facial expression and this is where I tell them to look at the camera it's kind of a must because if they're not looking kind of looks like they're not paying attention to you and what you're doing and then it wouldn't really be a good close-up shot and they don't always have to smile I mean you can go back and forth with smiles and being serious um, it's not that big of a deal if they don't though It's one of Yami is one of my favorites. She kind of has a smirk on her face, and you, it really brings out her eyes, and it's one of my favorites. It's one of Caitlin. I didn't have to tell her to do anything with her um, chin or her jawline. I just had to have her like tuck her hair behind her ear so I could get more of her jawline and made sure there was no glare coming off her sunglasses. She because she was sitting on stairs and it was really kind of hard for her to like position herself well. Okay, this one of Molly, it's one of my favorites. Um, I didn't have to tell her to do anything with her jawline because she was looking up at me, so it kind of already automatically created that. So I brought the color out more in her eyes to go with like the blue on the ladder. Here's some advice that I really feel strongly about. Like if your subject is experimenting with an awkward pose and they're really outgoing, they want to try something different, make sure you try to capture it in a different way because if you use a traditional way, it can make it look even more awkward and it looks really bad and they probably won't like the way you take your pictures. And if you're not allowed on a certain property while trying to find a background, don't go there because you don't want the evidence and you don't want to get in trouble because it's really not worth it and the person might not feel comfortable if it's a... speaking from experience? Yes. <laughs> I think Demi and uh, Rachel have the day they yeah, got in they, trouble for they were in the junkyard and the guy came and started following them around so they were junking behind cars. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're trying to get a cool angle for a picture, make sure you put the focus on your subject and not something else because it can create like unwanted blur and it can just not, it's not usable. And utilize the sunlight. Um, if your flash is on, it can make your subject appear white or drain them of their natural skin tone. And I really don't use my flash that much, I try not to. It looks great in a picture and it's free. The only th bad thing about it is if your subject is facing the sun, they usually squint in order to bear it, so that's not usable either. And finally, it can create really cool shadows. It, on the time, at the time of day, it really depends, though. When the sun's going down, it creates the best ones. 
Um, this one of Kayla is a really great example because that's a really cool pose, but the way I took it is really awkward and kind of makes it, it's really not that great. But when I told her to stand in front of me and went from the grass, it's more of a unique angle and it kind of looks like artsy. This is the bad evidence. <laughs> we didn't know if we were allowed here or not, so we kind of just went there, took like three pictures. We thought we still had someone, so we just bolted and left. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know, but it was really creepy. Um, um, Yami's shadow here, it was really, it had so much personality, but if I would have pointed the camera directly at her, it would have been a really traditional pose. But so I just took the picture of her shadow, so it would be really different. The one of Caitlin, her shadow kind of highlights her last name and just incorporates it all. How'd you get up that high on that one? That was from the bridge on the senior bridge, and okay. I told her to go down and write her name. Cool. This is an example of using the sunlight without having them like, directly look into it, because the way Caitlin's standing, it's great for her side profile, and it kind of creates that, and the flowers kind of just meshes well together. And these pictures, the sunlight it creates a focal point. Because then it, where the sunlight's on Caitlin, it kind of draws you to look at her because it's like shining right on her. And the one of um, Kayla and Brett and Jacqueline, it shines it directly on them, so you're looking more at them. In this picture, um, I was sitting in the grass and it got in the way, and it took the focus away from Brett and Jacqueline, so it kind of had to move it and zoom in to put the focus back on them basically the same picture. Um, usually you should work with your background. Yami's looking through a bridge here, but when she moved her head just a little bit, it kind of, the bolt kind of covered her eye and it made it look really bad. So I had to have her scoot over to like get the shot I was looking for. This is a really important process to me. It kind of like makes or breaks your picture. I mean, you, it's really important to try to at least edit pictures. Some do look better the way they are taken, but you should always ask um, the person in your picture like for advice of what they want done to their picture. Uh, over, avoid over blurring a picture because it can end up looking really fake because you don't have to have a professional camera to get a, a professional blur. You can always do that with Picnic or Photoshop. Just, uh, make a person's face a focal point if it isn't already. When you edit close-up pictures, put the focus on their eyes because everyone has pretty eyes and it's always something you can work with. And fix any blemishes they may have, but keep it as natural as possible because you don't want them to like look fake. This picture of, these pictures of Caitlin haven't been edited at all. I thought they were best they were originally taken. Um, the way she's standing on the first one it blackens out her face, but it puts more um, focus on her shirt. It kind of ties in the background with her shirt. And the other one, it's like the same thing. It's one of Molly. She was laying on the stairs, and since she didn't really have a smile, I decided to make it more serious, and it blackened everything and made it darker, and it kind of creates more of an attitude you wouldn't necessarily think she had. This one was uh, an okay picture, but it was kind of boring. So I went into Picnic and I added like rays, color, and darkened it. And it changed it really dramatically and it made it fun to look at. And that's it.